Hi, I'm Frank. Let's evolve waxworms to eat plastic. This is the start of a new long-term continuous evolution project to evolve waxworms to eat plastic. I'll be making regular updates and throughout the series I hope to show you what I'm doing and explain my thinking so that you can try this yourself and make improvements to the process. Uh, in this video I'm going to first give a little background then I'm going to explain a little bit how I plan to do the evolution. I'll explain my first experiment and then we'll get straight into it and we're going to set up the first experiment. Let's go! This is the experiment that really got me thinking about this project. The authors of this paper show that the waxworms are eating this plastic bag, but it's not clear to me that the waxworms are actually digesting the plastic bag or merely chewing it uh, to get through the plastic bag to escape or uh, find another food source. It is fairly plausible that, that the waxworms are eating the plastic and digesting it. Uh, polyethylene is quite similar to wax, but the experiments that they show and the data that they show, I would say, is not conclusive. The most conclusive experiment would be a, an isotopically labeled uh, polyethylene and showing that the isotopes of the isotopically labeled polyethylene were incorporated into the proteins or the fats or some other biomolecule of the waxworm. Uh, but nevertheless, this is very compelling stuff and definitely, you know, enough for me to start this. Uh, let's see how it goes, eh? My aim is to evolve the wax moth with its associated intestinal flora to replace carbohydrates and fats with polyethylene as the primary energy source. The method will be first to define a simple media that will support the full waxworm life cycle. Then we'll apply selective pressure by limiting the amount of carbohydrates that the waxworms can live on and also providing an alternative energy source. This case, we'll be using polyethylene. The worms that are able to reproduce on the least amount of carbohydrate will be selected for breeding. And finally, and this is where the magic happens, we iterate steps two and three. So successive generations will be subjected to additional selective pressure, each time increasing, hopefully, the pressure by limiting further and further the amount of carbohydrates. So in order to limit the amount of carbohydrates the worms are getting, we need to look at the basic worm diet. This is the diet as best I can gather from my limited research. A wheat bran, honey and glycerol in these proportions. You can see each one of these components uh, is a carbohydrate source. Uh, so we're going to have to look, dig a little bit deeper. So to determine which component of the diet we want to reduce first, uh, let's look at the components. So wheat bran has a lot of carbs, uh, a fair amount of protein, some fats, and vitamins. Uh, importantly, wheat bran also contains a lot of amino acids in the form of proteins and also some essential vitamins and uh, cholesterols which can be critical for development. Honey, on the other hand, is mostly carbs, more than 80%. It also has a fair amount of water which is obviously essential and some small amounts of vitamins, minerals and enzymes and also a, little, a few amino acids totaling up about half a percent. Glycerol is used because it's extremely hygroscopic, that is it absorbs water out of the atmosphere. So that's something I don't really want to fool with too much. So looking at these three components, it looks like I think honey is the one that I can reduce the most and not run into trouble with uh, running out of essential amino acids or cholesterols or energy. So we're going to try to reduce the amount of honey in the, in the diet. This is the experimental scheme that I've come up with. Group one is just the basic media, my positive control. Wheat bran, honey, glycerol, and no polyethylene. Groups two, three, four, and five are the same as the basic media, except the amount of honey is reduced. So going from 15 grams to 11 and 0.3, 7.5, 3.8, and then zero. Group six is the basic media, same as group one, plus the plastic, the polyethylene. Group seven, eight, nine, and 10 are the same as groups two through five, but with the addition of polyethylene. So I've made up all my media. What I essentially have here is two identical sets of a dilution series of honey in the basic media. So here you've got 
100% honey, that is 15 grams of honey with 34 grams of wheat bran and 7.5 grams of glycerol. And then, as you can see, I've added less honey here. Uh, this is 75% honey, or 11.3 grams. This is 7.5 grams of honey, 3.8 grams of honey, and no honey. Okay. So, to the first set, I'm just going to add the worms as they, as they are, the wax worms. And the second set, I'm going to first add my plastic. The only thing that's changing here is the concentration of honey with or without plastic. Okay, let's put this aside and let's talk about the plastic. For our purposes, we're going to just talk about low-density polyethylene and high-density polyethylene. So here we've got pretty thick low-density LDPE polyethylene. We've got a much thinner type of polyethylene, also low-density. But as you can see, the uh, thickness is much, uh, much less. We've also got high-density polyethylene, HDPE. And this is really thick and tough stuff. And uh, thin, high-density polyethylene. So, I think obviously the worms are going to have a much easier time chewing on this stuff. And it's... Uh, the smaller particulates are going to give the bacteria inside more surface area to work with. So we're definitely going to include some of these. And at the moment I'm thinking maybe 2.5 grams of each plastic for each of the five uh, tubes. Each of the five experiments. Maybe I'll just do 5 grams of this and 5 grams of this. We'll see how we go. After a little back and forth I decided let's go with... 5 grams of the low density polyethylene and 3 grams of the high density polyethylene, both the thin type. I don't want to give the uh, worms too much of a challenge trying to chew through that uh, thicker plastic, so this is what we're going to go with. Okay, here they are, the superstars. I'm going to try to count out 10 worms per jar. There should be 50 in this uh, little tub and 15 in another tub that I have, so... I'm gonna have to separate them. Just doing three at a time, making sure that I get live ones. Out of this tub I got 32 worms that looked like they had a bit of life. Um, there were a bunch in here, maybe another 20 or so, but they just don't respond to any sort of touch. So I don't want to put in, I don't want to put in any sick or near to death worms. Uh, that's not going to help me in the long run. Okay, I've added my worms to each of the jars. I've got six worms in each jar and seven in this last jar over here. So 61 worms when I was expecting 100. That's not great, but I think it'll be enough uh, for this experiment. And hopefully once uh, we get through one full life cycle, I'll have more worms than I can shake a stick at. So. All told, I think we're in good shape. Now we've got uh, a little bit of wax paper in these ones. You can see the worms in the bottom. They will, the worms will uh, nest in the paper. 
And I think that should, it looks like there's enough space in these, in these guys for the moths to fly around. No problem. A little bit of a different story for the plastic containing jars. There's a little bit of space, but I imagine any moth would probably have a pretty, pretty hard time. So once these guys cocoon, I might take out the plastic and uh, uh, inspect it, and uh, that'll give the moths a bit of a bit more space to fly around and do their thing. So uh, there's wax paper in in every jar, as you can see. So I'm just going to put these guys in a warm place and let the moths do their thing. Okay, guys. So I guess that just about wraps up this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. If you're inspired to try something like this for yourself, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you've got any comments on how I could do this better, by all means, please let me know. This is an open-ended project, so uh, keen to hear any and all input. If you want to catch the updates, go ahead and subscribe. And with that, I'll see you guys at the next update. Wish us luck. Bye.